for black girl nerds. Keegan, I love a good layered bad guy. I truly, truly do. Thank you. But what was even better about your bad guy was his origin story. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't so like the parents were killed like a superhero. It was very subtle, but it really is important in the development of young people. That little bit of encouragement can really make the difference in the trajectory yeah. of someone's life. Yeah. And so building upon that, was that the most compelling part of this role for you? Or what did you like most about your character, Gustafsson, and where he evolves, it, what he it, evolved to? It actually is, th that was the most compelling part of the character for me, was I, I always love uh, an origin story that's, that's layered and complicated and lives in the gray areas. And David Talbert and I spoke about it a lot. And I, 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 at one point in time, I was, I said, David, I have to say, I'm very inspired by Killmonger from, from Black Panther, another really well layered and well played out character where you go, I completely see where he's coming from. Mm -hmm. Now with Gustafson, the difference is that, as you said, I think the lesson for young people to take away from this would be this sense of patience or faith in oneself. Mm. Is that, that, that's how I looked at the character is that if he had, it's interesting, if he had waited five minutes, this would be a different movie. Yeah. And, and he would have been the, the apprentice with the mostest, you know, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but I, I, felt, I felt that, so that really kind of drove me because he really had a solid kind of concrete motivation, wrongly placed and from the wrong consciousness, but yeah. a, a motivation nonetheless. And, and I think it's helpful for young people to understand if you work towards something, trust me, everything will fall into place the way it should. If something doesn't happen here, it's supposed to, it's supposed to happen here mm -hmm. or something else is supposed to happen. You just have to be able to exercise a certain amount of, it's a combination of patience and faith. That's how I see it. Yeah. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. And adding upon that layer of him was you were not the comedy guy. We know that no. you are very comedic. You were very strategically placed as a straight guy compared to Ricky who had the zingers and the funny mm -hmm. one-liners and the things that happened. Is that a fun role for you to switch into being in that point of view compared to a more traditionally comedic point of view, like sometimes you normally are? It is. It is. I, I actually, I, I appreciate you saying that and noticing that. It's something that that I've been uh, changing a lot in my career, where I've been trying to move into more leading man roles, straight roles, action roles, um, uh, psychological drama roles. These are the things I'm looking for, actually, as I as I get older. And it's it's just part of my evolution, both as a person and as a performer. And so I, I I was that was one thing that did attract me to the role. And I've got a little I've got some moments here and there. But the, a lot of the comedy that the little bit of comedy that comes for me is born from the character. Right. It's it, it's his insecurity that makes him say, "I'm the toy maker of the year. I'm the toy maker of the year. I'm the toy maker of the year." You know, it's his insecurity that says. Um, um, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to wear all these fancy clothes and these rings. He's not being true to himself. He doesn't have a friendship with himself, mm -hmm. and um, and and I wanted to play those those layers as opposed to just, you know, I've been known as a physical comedian for such a long time in my career, and I, I wanted to kind of see what happens if you stand your ground and let all the fireworks happen inside. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it was so, I mean, the whole cast were doing some really amazing things to come together for this beautiful soup. Instead of a film, it's like a salad where there's lots of parts, but this, all, all of you in your own ways gelled it like a beautiful soup with mm -hmm. a, a big payoff in the ending, in the ending. One final question. Is it very challenging? You know, you've got Ricky Martin that you're playing off of, but you're really not because yeah. he's not physically there. How was that experience for you? Was it easy, difficult to kind of play off of a mark instead of a person? Yeah, it's it's always it's always a challenge. But the the thing that I always the technique for me is always you must tap in to the inner child. You have to tap into remember when you were a kid and you pretended there was a spaceship there or a dragon. That doesn't go away. It, it's you just have to access that part of yourself. So then I just try to imbue that piece of pink tape. <laughs> with 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 what would be what would be important. The other thing that helped drive me was 
Ricky is going to be sitting in a booth by himself and he doesn't get to be here and have fun with all of us. So give that tape your all, Keegan. Now, I was very lucky because I also had little figurines of Don Juan and, and, I, and I got to look at a monitor where they had this new technology where there was a man in the back with a mocap suit on and I could watch the little Don Juan move and walk on the monitor. But once you get in front of the camera, it's just, it's, you have to use your imagination. You have to use all of that childlike wonder that's still in there. You have to access that to make it, to make it um, uh, real, to make it real. You are awesome. Thank you so much for your time. I enjoyed this greatly and I love this trajectory of your career. Thank you so much. Thank you, Giandra. I really appreciate that. Thanks a lot. Have, have a wonderful have a day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Shake your booties for black girl nerds.